Recently, an ad made by Tanish depicted an interfaith marriage. The commercial shows a heartwarming scene between a pregnant woman being led to her bridal shower as part of a Hindu custom called Gud Bharai by a woman who viewers later realize is her mother-in-law. In the background, there's a woman in a hijab, another one in a sari, and a man in a skull cap. Eventually, they had to take down their video. After it went viral, many sanghis, including prominent politicians, started claiming that it was promoting love jihad. Many left liberals afterwards came out in support of that, but we still have to ask the question: Why did Tanish take down the ad? Tanish was trying to make a point about love jihad, that she was able to retain her culture even after marriage. But many people still consider this to be a loss of a woman. This basically tapped into the biggest anxiety that Brahminical forces, such as the RSS, have been pushing for many, many years. Hindu khatre mein hai, to beti bachao. If they take one Hindu palika, then they will take the most of the Muslim palika. Ambedkar talks about why this is the case and this anxiety when he talks about the genesis of caste. The caste system exists on a basis of endogamy within exogamy. There are exceptions to this, such as matriarchal families in Kerala. But basically, you have to marry within the same caste and outside of the same clan. But because of this, the number of marriageable men and the number of marriageable women should remain the same. This is based on the caste's idea that an offspring born of a lower caste person would be then polluted. If you look at the laws laid down by Manu, marriage or God forbid sex between an upper caste woman and a lower caste man is considered to be the worst offense. That's why the control of women's sexuality as well as looking at Bahujan men as predators is such a huge part of Hindu caste society. Now, in many states, Muslims also have developed a caste system of their own. But this still exists outside of the Brahminical Hindu fold. Powers like the RSS don't have the social mandate to exert their power on the Muslim population. So not only are they losing women to someone outside of their caste, because of course women are property and belong to the community, they are losing them to a population who aren't under their social control. For this reason, the Tanishq ad is different from something like the controversial Sarvetsal ad, where they show children celebrating and appreciating Holi and Ramzan. Red Label also has many Hindu Muslim unity ads, but they're always about quote unquote good Muslims who are incredibly kind even towards their Islamophobic neighbors or create Ganesh Murtis for Hindu festivals. Yes, they show Hindu Muslim unity, but the foundation of the Hindu caste society isn't shaken or challenged in any way. Tanishq did not take down the ad immediately. First, they removed the comments and the likes and dislikes before eventually taking it down. But after that, they even issued a statement of apology and a Gujarat showroom even condemned the ad. Many people on social media showed this as proof that Tanishq was attacked by Sanghis and some media channels even said that Tanishq, a showroom of Tanishq, was physically attacked. But soon, this was disproven. Tanishq took down the video after some verbal attacks on social media along with a sea of praise. They must have spent months and months over this ad campaign, as well as a lot of money. Some bad comments. Is that all it takes for your entire politics to come crumbling down? I won't lie, I understand their perspective to the extent that they lost their consumers. Rich, powerful Savarna people who said that they will boycott Tanish. They're a company. They need profits to survive. But that exactly is the problem. We cannot expect market forces to take political positions because they will always choose what is profitable and what people will consume. The baseline purpose of any ad is to evoke such emotions that people will go and buy their product. Reducing politics to a matter of consumption is dangerous. This kind of liberal activism isn't about making sure that marginalized people are safe, won't be attacked, have the same privileges or that policies which are problematic are taken away. It's about buying that one feminist AF t-shirt which was made by an underpaid female factory worker. This is a critique that people have been making of American liberalism and wokeness for a really long time. That they're more interested in what's cool and what the market and media sells to them rather than material politics. Take the Black Panthers for instance. They were a radical socialist organization. 
but now they are sort of being reduced to this beret wearing leather jacket aesthetic. Since the 90s and the AIDS crisis there has also been a huge increase in what is known as rainbow capitalism. In July which is Pride Month, most western stores will completely plaster all their products with rainbows. On one hand this will certainly make upper class queer children feel safer and more accepted. But most key activists during the Stonewall riots which started Pride were homeless black and trans people who wanted free housing, free healthcare. They weren't fighting for having a rainbow everywhere. When we make politics a matter of commercial success, we end up alienating the most marginalized and oppressed people in any group. For instance, until a few years ago, there were far more depictions of interfaith marriage in media in general, whether they were ads or Bollywood. My guess is that because at the time, a lot of the Hindutva sentiments were on a regional rather than nationalist level, or at least they, they didn't have the same power. After Babri and the 2002 riots, advertisers decided to prey on the emotions of vulnerable Muslims in other regions. Such ads also really focus on the model minority concept. They take away any radical messaging possible. Think of the United Colors of Benetton ad. It shows two groups who seem as if they are going to have a communal clash. This plays off into a narrative that communal clashes only happen amongst working class people. It does not show how much of these so-called communal clashes are actually state sanctioned programs against Muslims. They will not critique customs such as God Bharai, which basically celebrate the fact that the woman has achieved her final goal in a Brahmanical patriarchal society. She got pregnant! That the greatest claim is that maybe an individual woman can retain her oppressive culture even in a Muslim family. When any movement gets mainstream attention, Big companies drop down like vultures, using it, appropriating it in a way that will make people buy their products. The CANRC protests saw many upper class and middle class people for the first time going out in the streets to fight for Muslim people's rights. With COVID, I'm sure many of these people felt detached from politics as a whole. So, Tanish brings you an alternative to actually being politically involved. Buy our stuff. Tanish clearly sorely mistook the amount of anti-Muslim hatred that is present in this country. And they thought that their watered-down take on Hindu-Muslim unity would attract progressive liberal audiences as well as rich Muslims. But when the going got tough, they were able to just pull their ad. But the Muslim women or the interfaith family that they're trying to represent cannot just give up their identity just because of financial stress or even because then life is under threat. So let's condemn Sanghi trolls, but let's also not praise Tanish. They saw an opportunity where a lot of people in this country were emotional and angry and they decided to exploit it. When they thought that it may affect their profits, they forgot their politics. It is of course comforting and nice to see progressive media amidst a sea of Hindutva propaganda and violence. But let's be mindful of the nuances these companies erase when they make their heartwarming, cash-grabbing Hindu-Muslim unity videos. Subscribe to Gauri Lankesh News as well as check out our website to see similar content and an independent news website.